rowdy. Hey, welcome back to Vice Grip Garage. I have now found myself somewhere in Michigan at the Tom Bailey Racing Facility because I am going on Summit Midwest Drags and this beautiful ice cream truck is my chariot. Let's take a close look, get a little bit behind the scenes here at Tom's facility and we got to start working our way south or southwest. I don't know where I'm at. There's driving involved. How to get in? Lean forward and fall. So if you're not familiar with Tom, he, you know, just has the fastest street car in the world. It's insane. He uh, had a little bit of a fire here on this one. And I won't talk a bunch about it because he has a really nice video on his channel. You can go watch everything on it, but it was just heartbreaking watching this thing go down. But you have to see the technology and everything in these cars. It's just unbelievable. And over here, there's the hood of it, or what's left anyway. Twin turbo LS Nova, well over 2,000 horsepower. This thing is absolutely beautiful. Look at the wheel tubs way up behind the seats. Paint on this is just a mirror finish. I'm nervous. This is about all as close as I want to get, if I'm being completely honest with you. Right height is perfect. Really nice. Oh, well, she fires right up. And we got brake lights. Look at that. It's doing the thing. Uh oh. Good save. Hey, it stopped. The brakes are kind of super good. Nice. I think I just peed a little. That explains it. Does that scare you too? A little bit. I knew he was going to do that. Oh, he already did it to you. Oof. Oof, da. If you're not first, you're last. Ricky Bobby. Beautiful. All right, let's take a look at this van. It's a 1970 Chevrolet, pretty sure. Let me look. Could be a GMC, probably not. It's a Chevrolet half ton. And we just ran down to Harbor Freight. The guy was gonna get some tools, you know, but they closed. We just missed them at six, dang it. But anyway, got the rundown on this thing and there's more beep boops and do dabs and relays that and compressors and airbags and I, I'm just gonna have to try to show you. There's, there's a lot going on. I mean, that happens. And then when you do these. That also happens. But the patina on this truck is just, I mean, it's as good as it gets, fellas, is what I'm saying. It's all there and it's not like rotted out. It's just got some good, old-fashioned patina nice streaks 
All the lights work, I'm told. Everything on it is functional. So I got here a little bit ago, actually, and the first thing we did is Tom and I bled the brakes. They took the rear sway bar out, made a few changes in it, and started bleeding the brakes, and the old fronts just weren't doing the thing. So we took the inside pad off so the pistons and the caliper can move a little bit more bled on them. There's still only about 32% brakes, which is more than I usually have. So we're just gonna roll with it. Uh, when I get to Ohio, I might uh, work on them a little bit more, but what is going on out there? Some sort of street race? Bring it down here. Oh, Corvette. And some sort of SUV, that's weird. This has got a Trailblazer driveline, I believe, and some sort of 4L65s transmission. It's got really nice gauges. Uh, I'm not going to do it, but this is like a 79 stage air horn. And I ain't kidding you. And he got me. He said there's an emergency button, so of course I leaned my head in and got blasted. We got boom booms, and there's switch laters, and I think that's a radio. I'm not sure where to put the cassette tape, but it's supposed to work. Some sort of generator thingy. Hot dog roller, and it works. So I'm gonna be consuming a lot of hot dogs. It's actually got really decent seats in it and stuff. One seat belt, that's all you need. Gonna have a passenger with me. Then there's plenty of room back here. And then I gotta show you, we got, we got a freezer here. So the idea here is we stop at each of these tracks. The guy's gonna be able to keep fellers refreshed. Maybe an ice cream sandwich, maybe something cold. To, Wet your back neck, maybe a hot dog. Could be a bratwurst, I'm not sure. Extra cooler. Let me take this out quick. And then there was a lever somewhere. I think right there. Yeah, look at this. This swings out. Get the sandwiches in there. It's fancy. It just turned on, it's already at 32 degrees, I think. It's pretty nice. And then I'm just gonna throw some tools in here. There's some in here already. It's not like I'm going to know what to do with a LFS engine anyway, or that style. We got backup beaconage. There's enough room to put a king size bed up there. Maybe you want to haul some shovels, gardening tools. Could be a lawnmower. I don't know. Some big old jack. It's got like 42 inch wheels. Opening the hood. It's this guy here. And then you got a lift. See? There's more beep boops and electro digicals. And I'm not sure what any of that stuff does. We got them relay things over here that make clicking noises. You know, it's in a row, ready to tow. There's a cup holders hanging down. Did some compressor work on this for the bags. They put a new radiator in here. Nice big be cool system. They put a lot of time into this thing. It's actually very well done. This feller here, I guess you can go rear battery or you can go front batteries or I think both means, you know, you get both of them at the same time. And that's where the charging whirler is charger laden. So I think you're supposed to keep it on both, but it's on two now. I'm not sure, maybe that's the way it's supposed to be. Definitely gonna be carrying a lot of that with us. Pretty sweet rig. How does this work? Let me just turn it. That does shut. Pretty slick. So in a nut of shells, this is my ride for the next week, 1,000 miles, no idea how to work on it, and I think I can barely comprehend how to operate it, so everything should be, you know, it's going to be just fine. Look at that C10 sitting back there. Got one of them GT Zeros, another turd gen, Camaro way over there, Bailey's I don't know, he's got more square footage here than my house. 19 cars fit in there. Oop, pothole. So here's the plan, we're gonna meet here first thing bright and early tomorrow morning. We're gonna load the ice cream truck up on a trailer. I'm gonna pull that down to Ohio. Bark twice if you're there.
that doesn't make sense anyway putting that on a trailer gonna trailer that down and then maybe work with the brakes a little bit Tom's getting all loaded up I think he's about done actually yeah we got some miles to make up tomorrow seven million three hundred fourteen early o'clock I'm not sure I was editing this morning had plenty of time all of a sudden Tom texted me and said hey we're in Eastern time all of a sudden the guy was late dang it I got here and they already had the ice cream truck strapped down to the trailer my bad but hey we're ready to go so I think I'm just gonna grab some coffee fuel up and I don't know how many miles is it guys many many miles I don't know we drive and then we get somewhere today and then things happen with paperwork and then I think it's hot dogs so I don't know let's get going guy stopped north of Norwalk I think something like that I had to get some cold snacks some ice gonna start loading up some of the coolers stuff like that I got to thinking I wonder if someone could help with the break later situation so I made a post on the ants down some face space and sure enough street machinery got a hold of me they're just east of cleveland so instead of snagging down i'm gonna snag over and he's gonna help me try to figure out this brake situation it might just be too small of a master it just doesn't have enough hps to shoot the juice through but being that i'm gonna have a passenger for a thousand miles probably should try to get just a tickle more brakes Good news is the passenger seat doesn't have a seat belt, so he can bail whenever he wants. But if it was just me, I'm sure I would tough it out. But I don't want anybody else to get hurt on the road or the passenger. So that's where I'm headed right now. See if we can get this dang old ice cream truck to stop. Is that a cougar? It is. Red. <laughs> Feller's fire alarm is going off, but I think what it is is there's a hydrant that's opened up down here. There's probably a flow switch or gate valve on the suppression system in here. And sometimes if it senses low pressure, it'll trip an alarm. So hopefully it's nothing bad, but in the meantime, look at this gem. It's nice. Looks like he's no strangers to cubes. And just hooked my peepers on a bunch in the air. C10, there's a whole bunch in the back. He pulled up in that beautiful Pontiac. Nice, uh, nice outfit here. Looks like that guy's leaving. Bye. Yeah, it was a pressure switch in here, so. When the hydrant's open, the fire system senses that something must be flowing because the pressure's dropped, so it assumes that the sprinklers are going off. So then those horn strobes up there go off, and uh, basically the alarm system notifies the alarm company, and then they dispatch these hard-working gentlemen right here, and women. They were here quick. So we made sure the master was bled, and we just did it again to make sure and then we bled the front again. We are getting fluid down to the calipers. Kind of what we're thinking at this point is, this is a 0.8 or less than an inch master. And it would have been a 30 millimeter originally on something like this that had those brakes, which is about an inch and an eighth. Kind of around there if math magicianals are close anyway. So this master might not have enough juice shooting power fire off these calipers everywhere is closed already 
or it's going to be closed by the time I get to it. So we're trying to figure out what we can do for something like this. I may end up just being stuck here tonight, have to get up to Summit Racing in the morning. They open at 9, come back down here and try to swap this quick, or at least we have some tools and stuff like that. Then after that, I can head over to Norwalk. I'll be significantly late, but that's just what a guy does, you know. Uh, Boris is double checking, making sure that he doesn't have something in stock. He's got a few in there, actually more than a few. They just don't quite clear the hood because that hood is such a sharp slant. Uh, so that's kind of what we're fighting right now. But you know what? It's a beautiful day, sun shining. Well, as luck would go ahead and have it, this feller knows another feller that works at Summit Racing. And uh, he's either gonna stay after work, which is amazing, or they're gonna like throw it in a trash can for me. So I'm gonna fly there, it's about an hour, fly back, and we're gonna put this in the night. This guy is awesome. He could be home right now. And uh, he's just hanging out, helping me. Car community, I've said it a hundred times. The best, friendliest people there are, period. They're still working on the fire hydrant down here. If you've never been to one of these retail stores, you gotta do it. It's on the, get it on the bucket list. These guys were nice. They were waiting by the door for me. Let me in, I'm gonna sneak over here and pay up. Got the brake master and a fuel sending unit for one of Tom's friends, 72 Chevelle. Look at them torque twisters. Back, old one's off. Here's the new one. Yeah, the old one had a push rod that was part of this piece here. And then you just thread this on and make your adjustment. This one's a little bit different. It's more of a GM style where the push rod is part of the pedal assembly with a clevis and a pin. So Boris is looking for something right now. We're gonna try to find that so we can get the same exact distance here. So the stroke is the same as how it was set up because all of this was drilled and configured precisely for that. You can see there's pinholes in the pedal up here. So as this depresses, it's a certain height and stroke. So that's kind of the next challenge. There's some good stuff just everywhere. Check out this lowrider over here. Borla intake, beautiful. Well, we got the brakes fixed up, which is great. Took it for a couple test trips. Next issue is a uh, thing called ball joint is just it's shot. Kind of hard to see. Here might be our problem solver to independence. Uh, a body frame. 12 bolt rear end already in it. It's got Morrison control arms and everything. It's already got disc stop Uh The problem is just getting it home. And then you sold the SS and the Monty, right? Already? Yeah. Yep. yeah. I've always wanted one of these short boxes. 2,900 miles on the truck. 2,900 miles. Yeah, this one's got 23. Oh, 23. Yeah, this one's got 2,000. 900. You've got stuff and stuff. Are all this, is this for sale back here, all this? Uh, most of it is customer stuff, but a few are scattered are for sale. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Little Dodge. Look at this Ford. Very cool. Can't really see it, but we're pulling in to Summit Motorsports Park. World famous. Bleachers are American flag, that's pretty cool. 
Well, this here machine probably gives it away, but I made it to the Bailey Racing Compound. Everyone's already kind of shut down. It's a really long day tomorrow. Lots of racing and driving. And just a reminder, it's going to be four different tracks. We're going to be driving in between. And we're just kind of along for the ride, spectating, showing up. Again, maybe ice cream, hot dogs. Someone said maybe baristas. I don't know what that is. I think it's a WWF wrestler. That or coffee. Not sure. But just checking it out and see what it's like. Maybe we'll end up doing this next year. Also get us prepped for Rocky Mountain Race Week. So but that's going to do it for this episode. Make sure to stay tuned. Thanks, guys, for watching. See you next time.